you know, I think it's safe to say that most of the Java and Spring Boot developers that I know aren't big on writing documentation. We kind of embrace that agile philosophy of working software over comprehensive documentation. But when it comes to RESTful APIs, you need to document them because other people outside of your organization are going to be consuming them. They need to know what the names of the endpoints are. They need to know the parameters to pass into various endpoints and methods. And of course, they need to know the, the schema and the structure of the JSON or XML data that's going to be sent to the server or pulled back from a RESTful API call. And that is where Swagger comes in. That's where Open API comes in. And that's what I want to show you right now, specifically how to document your Spring Boot RESTful API with, with Swagger and the annotations that that come with version three of the Open API. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at theserverside.com and I have to be one of the world's biggest Spring Boot advocates. And at the same time, I'm really a big fan of Swagger. And I wanna show you how you can use some of those Swagger annotations in your Spring Boot RESTful APIs to easily and quickly create documentation. And that is what we're gonna do next. If you want to use Swagger to document your RESTful Spring Boot APIs, there's a little bit of configuration that you have to do, but it's not much. I cover it all in another tutorial that uh, I'll link to in the description. But the basics are this. First, you need a Spring Boot application. Secondly, you need a RESTful API to document. I've actually got the code here that I wrote in a, a Spring Boot REST API tutorial that I have on YouTube. And you have to add some configuration to your Maven or Gradle project. I'm using a Maven project here, and you can see that I've added the dependency for Spring Doc, Open API, Starter, Web MVC, UI. That's the one you need if you're using Spring Boot. There's a different one for Spring Web Flux. There's a different one for different projects. So make sure you get the Web MVC UI if you're decorating a REST controller. By the way, if you're using Gradle, just head over to Maven Central and uh, you can get the coordinates for Gradle over there. In fact, if you want to copy and paste the Maven coordinates, they're right there as well. So make sure you've got that all set up. Make sure you've made that configuration change to your Gradle or Maven project. I'd even say maybe restart the project just to make sure that that everything gets updated. And once you've done that, head over to localhost 8080 slash swagger dash UI slash index.html. And the basic documentation for your API will come up on the, the Swagger page. It's actually very, very impressive. You can see there's the, the get operation. There's put, delete, post, patch, get again. Those are all the different APIs. You can actually see this one takes a, a path parameter. I think uh, the patch takes a query parameter. So it's interesting. It's actually giving you a bit of detail here. But, you know, we really want to add more detail and more of an explanation of how to use this API. And what the open API annotations allow you to do is decorate your code in a meaningful way and have it show up here. Let me give you a, a nice little example. I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm going to go take a look at the post operation. So the post operation in my application will actually update the number of wins by one. So it's a non identity update of the wins by a single unit um, by one. So if someone goes to slash score slash wins, they call this through a post invocation the number of wins in my score object, the score keeps track of the wins, losses, and ties in uh, in my application, the number of wins will increase by one. Now, I do have, do you see the red X there? Okay, if you see a red X there, you need your eyes checked because it's a white X in a red circle. But nevertheless, I do have to do a little source organize import because the annotation for operation that I've got there is from a different package. So I'll save that. Um, and now uh, I've got DevTools installed for Spring Boot. So it's going to do a restart 
I'll go back to Swagger. I'm going to take a look at that post mapping, do a refresh. And boom, we now see on that post mapping, it says non edipotent update, idempotent update of the winds by a single unit by one. So we've now decorated that method and provided some detail for it. And similarly, I've got a, a patch operation where you can specify exactly the number of wins. So the post increases by one, like a game is played and somebody wants to increase the number of wins by one. Sometimes you might just say, want to say, make the wins a hundred. Um, so that's a patch mapping. And now there's a request parameter there that takes the new value for the number of wins. I'm going to add this parameter annotation that says, uh, here's a new value for the number of wins. Do a control shift O, save my changes. That little red X goes away. Oh, white X in a red circle goes away. And so new value for the number of wins. I'm going to come over here to my REST API, click refresh and be like, hey, it's not there. I don't see it. Well, of course, you got to open up patch. But there, it tells me right there, hey, uh, what's the new value? Well, that's the new value for the number of wins. So pretty cool, pretty interesting. There's even a, a little bit more updated, uh, not updated, but extensive annotation. It's called API response. And I'm going to throw that on the patch mapping here right at the beginning. And this one says that, well, if everything goes well, we'll return a, a 200 code. Uh, the description that will tell anybody asking about this is that it will uh, update the wins, wins updated, and the score is returned. What's a score? Well, it points to the score class right here, saying that that's part of the, uh, the schema that this will use. So the data that gets sent back to the client will follow a schema that maps to the score class. I'm going to do a control shift O, a control S, watch the Spring Boot project restart and then come over here and do a refresh. And now if I take a look at this patch operation, come down here under the responses, it says wins updated, score returned. It's returning application JSON and of course the schema maps to the, the score class wins, losses and ties. So we're, we're getting deeper into these annotations. Now, by the way, if you want, you can actually annotate and decorate your schema classes. So I'm going to come over here and take a look at my score class. And I'm going to throw some annotations on wins, losses, and ties. It's a, the size annotation. And note, this is not a Swagger Open API Java Spring Boot annotation. It's actually from uh, the bean validation specification, jakarta.validationconstraints.size. But I'm saying these values should be from zero to 100. So I click save, I click refresh over here on Swagger, and I'm gonna drill down right to the bottom, take a look at the score. Notice it tells me that the score is wins, losses, and ties. And it also tells me that the max number is 100 and the minimum is zero. So we're actually getting information from those annotations right into the schema, creating that RESTful API documentation for your Java Spring Boot applications. All pretty cool. Now, by the way, right off the bat, we've got a little detail up at the top there. It just says open API definition. But if you've got your own API, you want to update that. So uh, right at the top of my class, and it's specifically your REST controller. And there's my score controller. I'm going to add in. This one's a little complicated. I may have to scroll a little bit here. Control Shift O to save all the changes. But you can see that it's got a, a reference to an info object. The open API definition references an info object. The info object references things like the title. Here's the score API in the definition. Um, I put the word definition there so that when it appears, we know that it was part of this annotation. Version one, two, description, operations to help settle scores. That's a bit of a joke, but um, so now we've got this kind of annotation that really describes the whole API in general. And if I jump back to Swagger, do a little refresh, boom, you'll notice that the title here has changed score API definition. It says it's 
two, and it says operations to help settle scores. So uh, again, things are, are getting good. Things are getting interesting. Now, by the way, there's actually some, some cool things that just with the Spring Boot API or, or, or standard Java APIs. So for example, if you go to Spring Boot application and you've got a, a method that simply returns a pageable object, and now with all of the imports resolved, we can now go and take a look at how this turns out in the Swagger page. Now, a couple of things, uh, just make sure in order to get page resolved, you need Spring Data installed and you'd probably need like the H2 database uh, uh, linking to that at the, the very least, just so that Spring Data will start up uh, when you restart the application. But watch this. Now, when I go to Swagger, the schema will have changed significantly because of that, that object that I added for paging. And so I'm going to come down to schemas. Actually, I'll do a refresh first. Come down to schemas. And notice we've got the score, but we've also got a variety of schema objects that help with sorting and pagination and looping through results that we might get from multiple queries against a, a large database. So we've got the sort object with direction, null handling, ascending, the page object with offset, sort, page, page size, buffer, page source, and then of course we've got the, the score class as well. So all really cool additions to uh, to your documentation that really we didn't have to do much, right? That would have just come naturally if we actually had a method that, that did paging against our JDBC database. Um, so super cool, super interesting. And do I even have that search method here? I'll open up that search method. And you can see that for the search method, it takes the, the, the page, takes the size, we can have sorting attributes in there. So again, it's kind of like all of this is getting integrated right into Swagger, right into our documentation for us. You can even see the, the description of that schema getting very, very interesting right now as we build our application. Okay, so what's next? Well, I think I got one last trick up my sleeve and it is uh, working with uh, controller advice and also some exception handlers. So I do have a global exception handler in this project, although it's not doing anything. So there it is right there. I'm going to update its code and do a little organize imports. And essentially what I, I've done is I've got a, a REST controller a advice stereotype on this class. And as you can see, it's a, an exception handler. It'll get triggered whenever the HTTP message not readable exception is triggered. You've got a list, uh, an exception to respond to there. Um, and the response status that it will send back is I am a teapot. Okay, it, it is one of the statuses. You can use any status you want. Um, I mean, be serious about it in production, but continue created already reported any of the the standard HTTP response codes will be in here. Um, not modified, payment required, service unavailable, like, so you can put them all in there. I just did, I have a teapot because it kind of struck me as amusing. Um, but now we've actually specified what, what happens when the HTTP message not readable exception happens. So let's save that and we'll head down into our Swagger UI. Do a little refresh over here. Oh, it looks like we need to restart the application. Oh, I got a little error there. That was my bad. Spring Boot will restart. Come over to Swagger. I left a, a little S in there. And as we do this refreshing over here, you'll notice that it actually says on this particular request response cycle, uh, a 418 code, I am a teapot, potentially could get returned. So this becomes listed as one of the, 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 the possible, well, that wouldn't be an error code, status code that could be returned from one of these methods. So you get a really good idea of all of the different things that potentially you can document here when you're working with Swagger, Open API, and Spring Boot. So that was the global exception handler here. Here we see my Java bean that 
uh, gets uh, used as the, the schema representing the JSON that gets sent back and forth across the server. Here we see the POM file and here we actually see our controller and the controller is where really the bulk of all these annotations went. Open API definition, the API response, the path, not the path parameter, but the parameter annotation, the operation annotation as well. So you get a, get a good idea of, well, in this case, how easy it is to use these open API swagger annotations to help you document your Spring Boot REST APIs. Uh, you get to see how nice this Swagger user interface is to actually see how things are progressing and what your APIs look like and then actually interact with and call endpoints on your code to make sure everything comes back properly and test the different scenarios. Um, and I just think overall it is a, a pretty sweet a little technology for helping you document those Spring Boot RESTful APIs. Anyways, there you go. That is Swagger, Open API, Spring Boot, and REST APIs in Java and how to document them. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We got lots of great tutorials on Spring Boot, Jakarta EE, Git, GitHub, Agile, Scrum, you name it. Um, I do have a couple of books. You can see Hibernate made easy back there. So I'm big on JPA, also Pickering and Springfield. And there's also uh, Darcy DeClute at Scrumptious on Twitter, her Scrum Master Certification Guide. If you're agile and working with Scrum, you know, a lot of people are getting 100% on the exam by following uh, and reading that book. So feel free to check it out. Um, if you're interested in me, my uh, Twitter handle is at CameronMCNZ. So feel free to follow. And finally, if you're watching this on Twitter, well, why don't you subscribe?